Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about third type of driver which is for the which is used for driving large capacity loads is a bi CMOS driver. In the previous video, that means in the last two videos, I have explained the super buffers and cascaded inverters as drivers. Those two are also used to reduce the delay of the signal because when the diving large capacitance load is considered, the capacitance load capacitance is greater than or equal to four times that of the square CG. Okay, a standard square CG capacitance if you consider four times of this particular capacitance is your load capacitance. To drive such a long large capacitance, we may have drivers like CMOS drivers because CMOS drivers we have seen the super buffers and uh, inverters and now we are going to see the bi CMOS in, uh, drivers. Bi CMOS is nothing but it consists of two technologies bi CMOS consists of bipolar technology plus CMOS technology. Bipolar technology plus CMOS technology. We know very well bipolar technology is fast compared to CMOS technology. Bipolar technology is fast compared to CMOS technology. So when, when we are mixing this bipolar technology with the CMOS technology, some characteristics of this bipolar technology may also happen with the CMOS technology like speed. So that we can use such type of uh, feature to drive large capacitances for the CMOS outputs. Okay, so the bipolar transistor drives as the output stage of the inverter and logic gate circuits. <coughs> bipolar transistor, bipolar transistor drivers as the output stays of inverter and logic circuits and for logic circuits. So BJT logic BJT logic has much better drive capabilities much better drive capabilities than CMOS than CMOS so BJT has it is because BJT has larger transconductance GM BJT has larger transconductance GM and much larger and much larger current per unit area much larger current density I can write it as current density current per unit area because of these two features you are having the driving capability of the BJT is I compared to CMOS a much smaller voltage swing a much smaller voltage swing is required a much smaller voltage swing is required for switching the BJT transistor hence switching transients are much faster as compared to CMOS switching transients are much faster as compared to CMOS circuits. Okay, so the bipolar transistors have an exponential dependence. 
of the output current IC on the input base of emitter voltage VBE. Bipolar transistors have an exponential have an exponential dependence of the output current IC on the input base to emitter voltage base to emitter voltage that means VBE IC is proportional to VBE okay so that means the device can be operated with much smaller input voltage swings than MOS transients and still switch relatively large currents okay so if we want to take this example as a bipolar technology and the CMOS technology the switching performance of the transistor driving a capacitor load may be visualized initially from the simple model given in this figure see this figure I am taking a on transistor like a resistor R and this transistor is open circuited and load with a high capacitor load CL loaded with high capacitance load CL across which we are taking the output this is VDD resistor is connected between VDD and output and this another transistor which is an off state connected between output and ground so input we are applying onto this transistor okay so clearly since the bipolar transistor has relatively high transconductance the value of delta T is very small as GM is very high delta T is very small delta T is very small the value of this delta T becomes very small the bipolar transistor delay release uh, reveals that it comprises two main components first one bipolar transistor delay reveals that bipolar transistor delay reveals that it comprises two main components it comprises two main components <coughs> that means they are T in nothing but initial time T in initial time necessary to charge necessary to charge the base emitter junction base emitter junction of BJT and TL time taken to charge time taken to charge the output load capacitance okay so TL is nothing but the time taken by the capacitor to charge in the output so the bipolar transistor has a higher value of TN and TL TN and TL is smaller because the faster charging rate okay so generally the relation is like this generally 
t in value generally t in value is higher than tl value tl value is low because the load time taken by the capacitor to charge and discharge must be done very fast compared to the remaining time periods so that it indicates that it is working fast okay so the combined effect of this t initial and tl is represented in delay estimation normally how this delay is calculated for the by cmos so delay in by cmos inverter can be described by can be described by t is equal to t initial plus v by id multiple times cl so where tn is equal to time to charge up base or emitter junction and hfe hfe where is hfe hfe we have missed here cl multiplied by 1 by hfe 1 by hfe so hfe we know transistor current gain i2 by i1 <coughs> transistor current gain i out by i in output current by input current so generally this total time delay can be calculated t is equal to initial time plus this 1 by hfe into cl v by id okay so this is the way how to calculate the total time delay for the by cmos inverter why we have by cmos drivers what is the main reason for moving towards the by cmos technology because by cmos technology of course it may consume more power but they are faster compared to cmos technology so whenever this type of driving large capacitance is required definitely we should go for the bipolar technology because of this because of its main feature like fast okay so in this way the uh, driving large capacitance can be accomplished in this cmos technology uh, with uh, three different uh, technologies like uh, three different ways like uh, by, by cmos drivers super buffers and cascaded inverters thank you